Our cases highlight the following seven management rules not to miss melanoma incognito. The first rule is dermoscopy should not be used only for suspicious skin lesions. In our first case, a melanoma arising in an otherwise banal appearing congenital, congenital melanocytic nevus was only diagnosed because we perform dermoscopic examination on all skin lesions rather than just the suspicious ones. Opponents of the technique argue that this is not cost effective and a waste of time. On the contrary, with experience, dermoscopic evaluation adds very little extra time, especially if polarized light handheld instrument is used, eliminating the need for fluid application. Rule 2. Biopsy lesions missing clinical dermoscopic correlation. The second case is a striking example of melanoma mimic mimicking a completely banal appearing dermal nevus. Our index of suspicion for melanoma was increased only because the dermoscopic picture did not confirm our clinical impression. In the context of clinic clinically banal lesions, what is seen by dermoscopy should fit with the clinical impression. Unexpected features should thus raise our uh, index of suspicion and the red flag. Rule number three, biopsy lesions with unspecific pigment pattern. The third case is an example of desmoplastic melanoma mimicking a non-pigmented benign inflammatory lesion. Unexpectedly, dermoscopic examination revealed a non-specific pigment pattern, not diagnostic of melanoma, yet atypical enough for us to decide to biopsy the lesion. Rule number four, biopsy lesions with spitzoid features. Clinically, the clinical recognition of spitz nevi is often difficult due to its heterogeneous morphologic features. By contrast, in most cases, pigmented spitz nevi are easily identified dermoscopically due to the presence of a peculiar starburst pattern. However, the latter may rarely be seen also in melanoma, as is the case in, the, in this uh, figure 4. Thus, especially in, in adult patients, a biopsy should always be performed when such spitzoid features are detected by dermoscopy. Rule number 5. Biopsy lesions with extensive regression features. The presence of regression structures is in another dermoscopic clue that should be kept in mind to avoid missing melanoma, especially when evaluating patients with multiple acquired melanocytic nevi. In a previous study, we demonstrated that in the absence of other melanoma-specific criteria, the risk for a lesion being melanoma directly increases with the extent of regression seen with dermoscopy. Therefore, lesions exhibiting extensive features of regression should always be biopsied, no matter what other dermoscopic criteria are present. This rule helped us make the correct diagnosis in the case shown in this figure. Rule number six. In patients with multiple nevi, biopsy lesions changing after short-term follow-up. Some melanoma cannot be diagnosed clinically or dermoscopically, but can be diagnosed effectively by monitoring dermoscopic changes over time. Short-term monitoring has shown that lesions changing after an average of three months have an 11% probability of being early melanoma. The lesion in, in figure 6 is a good example of a strategy designed to avoid missing melanoma while minim minimizing the excision of benign lesions. It should be emphasized, however, that monitoring protocols should only be used for moderately atypical flat or only slightly raised lesions without a history of change or dermoscopic evidence of melanoma, or for mildly atypical lesions without a history of change. Instead, in the case of a suspicious nodular lesion, the best strategy is, if in doubt, cut it out. Rule number seven, biopsy pink lesions with an atypical vascular pattern. There is an increasing evidence that dermoscopy can be helpful in diagnosis of hypopigmented and amelanotic tumors, 
because of the vascular structures that can be visualized using dermoscopy. Hypopigmented and amelanotic melanoma may often show an atypical vascular pattern consisting of dotted and linear irregular teleangiectactic vessels. Even though case number 7 had uh, other demoscopic criteria suggestive of melanoma, the atypical vascular pattern in this lesion was clearly inconsistent with the original clinical diagnosis of a BCC. In conclusion, this series of cases clearly points out that demoscopy is a valuable clinical tool that has the potential to raise the index of suspicion that a clinically unsuspicious or borderline lesion might in fact be a melanoma.